Hello everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the F2 Show by Inside F2. We have a very special guest with us on this week's episode of the F2 Show, Brad Benavidez. Brad, thank you very much for sitting down with Inside F2. Uh, where are you in the world right now? Hi everyone, and yes, thank you uh, Fraser for having me. It's a pleasure to be here on Inside F2. Um, I'm currently in Madrid, Spain. <laughs> I came here to, to do some simulator in a sim center called Racing Unleashed. Yeah, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, it was, was it was fun uh, on the on the sim today? Yeah, it was exhausting. I was uh, there today and yesterday. Uh, I actually got so exhausted that uh, I said, you know, I want to, between yesterday and today, I, today I want to make it a bit, you know, special. And I decided to get a buzz cut. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe it would shave off a couple of tents as well. So, I was yeah, just when, about to when, say. When, you, when you say that literally you're having an inside into F2, this is, it couldn't go more inside F2 than this. You know, you're having an insight on, on the next haircut, uh, that <laughs> update that you guys are going to have for the F2 grid. <laughs> There, there's the first exclusive tick we've got one brad benavidez has had a buzz cut we've had loads of questions coming in from fans uh, i'm going to ask as many as i can uh, to yes yeah, get for as many as i can uh, the first question comes from ishmael uh, and he says uh, brad name one food that you absolutely hate oh well, i'd say the i'd say you know like the fish shells i don't know what they're really called um but like the shells when like yeah just with the fish thing inside of it, I really don't. I really don't. What are those called? What is that plate called? Yeah, I, d- I don't know what they're called. I, I'm with you. They're not overly nice, right? So yeah. I'm not a big fish eater as it is. But uh, they don't yeah. smell good. And then you you think that you know since it's so popular, at least here in Spain, that you know the if it doesn't smell good, at least it's gonna taste good. But damn, it just really just does the wombo combo of just not my thing, you know? Yeah, I get that. Have you uh, have you had paella in Spain since you've been out there? Yeah, I'm not a total fan of it. Um, for some reason, ever since I got here and and tried it, I I never really you know got to be completely fond of it to be honest. But uh, yeah, I, it's whatever I you know I ha- have to to eat it. I enjoy it. It's fine. <laughs> Fair enough. That's enough about food. Let's talk about the season so far. Uh, how would you summarize the 2023 season as a whole up to this point? Well, as a whole, I'd say to this point, um, we could call it, it was Brad version 1.0 and now I'm going to try to be Brad version 2.0, 2.0 because it's been, it was a good break. So it was three weeks, almost a month uh, coming into this this next race weekend. So um, it, let's say Brad 1.0 has been, um, has been a very, um, let's say, Determined by his experience, um, the, the fact that he really truly is a rookie and not only in Formula 2, but in quite a bit as well. And in, 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 as like you said, a whole in his racing career, you know, I've uh, only done one year in FIA F3. And uh, as a fun little fact, F3 yes, last year uh, was my first championship that I ever completed like completely, fully. And uh, and just before that, I really only had done let's say one season, built by two half seasons that I did both in twenty nineteen and twenty twenty one. So I did let's say like two half seasons in each of those years, which we could total it up as as one season. So I'm, I think I've um, it's definitely not been easy, um, at least in my driving experience in my driving situation that I have in my career to be at the level of the guys that are that are at the grid currently. But um, it's it hasn't been totally, you know, um, negative, let's say. Um, I think there's definitely been quite a bit of, of positives throughout the five or no sorry, six rounds that we've that we've done that we've covered so far. Um, Baku, I think the pace that I had there, that was one of them. Um, even though in quality I really wasn't wasn't really lucky on in quali with that um, crash that I had in, in T1, um, basically on my flying first flying lap. Um, but then in the in the in free practice, I showed you know I could I was like top ten pace, and then and and in the race I in sprint race I did um, let's say almost like at the equator of the race I did the fastest lap, and then it was taken um, from me by uh, Oliver Behrman, um 
by like a couple of tenths, by like three tenths. But I still like my quickest lap in being in Baku, it was quite competitive. Um, and people there in the sprint race, they were going all out. So that was a promising result. Um, and then also Monaco, for example, as well. I, it, I, I mean, I didn't get any points again, but I, in, in the sprint race, I demonstrated, you know, consistency, decent pace when I was behind, um, Oliver again and, and the VAR, which I don't know who he was, but yeah, I was the whole race within the DRS and, and both drivers in front of me did have like a, quite a bit of a gap to the, to the guys that they had in front. So if they would have had more pace than me, they, they would have shown it. And that wasn't the case, meaning that there was another bit of positive um, insight in my, uh, of my, in like as a whole of my, um, of how it's gone so far. And uh, yeah, then obviously I've had races where it hasn't really gone my way. For example, Barcelona was, was a bit unlucky with my bit of miscommunication with my team and didn't wasn't putting the cars in the in the best window let's say a little bit as, as a team you know but um yeah gaining so much experience mm, more than anything and maturing so much understanding this car better and better so hopefully i can you know put all of this in in my pocket and, and really you know digest it so i can move forward properly as best as i can in this next races yeah, I can imagine it's been a massive learning curve and I'm looking forward to seeing Brad 2.0 for, for the rest of the season. Um, with it being your first season in Formula 2 and PHM's first uh, season as a, as a new team as well, how, how beneficial is it to have someone as experienced as Roy Nassani in the team and, and being your teammate? Yeah, he's a really, uh, he's a very generous person. So with any question that I have or any, basically literally any inquiry of of small details he's he can be on that with me and he can share his experience and he can share his wisdom and i appreciate that very much because you know it's i definitely perhaps would would need it you know but uh yeah it's been good the pace as well compared to him as in i've been consistently um exponentially catching up to him even even in the first race in bahrain i i out qualified him um which was a surprise but uh, after that, I've been a little bit in a, in, a, in a step back from him. But I've been I'm now consistently gaining back um, the pace compared to him. So yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, it's a good benchmark to to, to kind of test yourself against, isn't it? In in Roy Nassani. Um, Aaron asks, uh, how have the team supported you with your transition from Formula Three to Formula Two? Well, I, you know, I think there's always room for improvement there's always margin for improvement and um i find myself um pushing myself like i find myself in a situation where i'm pushing quite a lot to to let's say join in team spirit um my team a, a lot and i think that's that's a positive thing even though you know perhaps they could be helping me a bit more in 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 this in that situation um but um but yeah i think uh that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger you know so um it's i'm what well, together we're we're making a a better environment to work in and more um uh critical and constructive one to really to really start putting some good results in i think yeah, for sure. You you drove for ART in the in the Formula Three postseason test uh, late last year. Why did you choose to go to, with PHM in Formula Two rather than have another year in Formula Three, for example? Particularly if there was some offers to to move up the grid in Formula Three. Yeah, I think that um, this is a bit more of a, a, an insight, really, of my career choice that I that I did last year. Or not really that I did, but also my management team and my family, we did because of the situation that we were facing. And that is really, we couldn't have done another F3 year um, this year if it would have been um, solely um, invested, um, I mean, solely, uh, let's say, backed by my by my family. Um and I, we were able to really, you know, find a God bless the opportunity with uh, 
with my sponsors that I have currently, which is AIX Investments, and um, which they're a firm out of Dubai. They're incredibly successful, and they had the brilliant idea. Well, I mean, obviously we we proposed also the brilliant the idea of the sponsor, but they counter offered the brilliant idea of fully just going with the whole car as an X car, AIX car, and uh, and yeah, that's what basically put me in, in the situation where I am now. And, um, you know, it's definitely, I definitely think that, yeah, there could have been other choices or another path that I could have taken, but, you know, it's the path that I'm on now. And therefore, I think it's it's the best one because I have, like, complete faith and belief that, you know, whatever is happening to me in, in my driving career is, is for the best, you know. Yeah, it's a fascinating insight. Um, you you mentioned about the fact that twenty twenty two was your first full season in a in a category. I actually noticed that when I was uh, doing a bit of research. I couldn't quite believe it when uh, when I saw that. Are you uh, are you planning to see out the season in Formula Two this year, or uh, is there plans to move to Formula One halfway through uh, the season? <laughs> Damn, that would be that would be a dream come true, man. <laughs> ever, since I'm, uh, ever since I moved to Spain in twenty seventeen, if they would have told me that. That would have ever been a plausible situation, then crap. Well, that would be, that would be out of this world. Obviously, it's quite a, yeah, quite only from a fiction of our imagination. But uh, if if um, if obviously I'm sticking to to the year because um, unlike the 2019 and 2021 years where contract was a bit different than what I'm in now. What I'm in now definitely it's secured and and um, we're facing the rest of the complete season uh fortunately this time and um yeah definitely looking into maximizing it like you said i mean obviously f1 <laughs> halfway through the year is completely imaginary but you know 2025 2020 yeah 2025 i think it's never impossible and even 2026 you know there's a couple of drivers in f2 that did three years and like Drugovic, he won his championship um after the last third year yeah for sure that'd be great and we're looking forward to to seeing your progress over the next few years um back to the fan question sam asks uh would you like to see formula two racing in the u.s in the future uh, and if so which of the three circuits on the formula one calendar would you like to see formula two visit and i i love this question because my i love Formula Two, you know, it's uh, I, I I do this podcast, but I also I'm a big fan of Formula Two. Um, and my biggest hate, my pet, biggest pet hate about Formula Two is the gap between Monza and Abu Dhabi at the end of the year, and it's like a yeah. big gap. So for me, going to the US kind of makes sense. So what what one of those three races would you like to go to? Yeah, yeah, that what happens there is just like a freaking ticking time bomb, right? That is just like boom, you get to Abu Dhabi after basically like so much time and it's just it just uh <laughs> it pulls together so much anxiety and stress right but uh yeah I'd, i definitely would be would uh would be keen to go to the u.s in that in that uh window of time and i'd say topic you know without a doubt would be uh miami because i was born you know just uh just like 10 minutes off the off the hard rock stadium um, where they race in the hospital that's really nearby so and I yeah I mean I was the first 10 years of my life I was um, brought up there so definitely top pick Miami love that and the uh, the track in Formula One looks great as well doesn't it so uh, that would be awesome um you've just spoken about you know the uh, the fact that it might give you a bit of anxiety I wanted to ask you about mental well-being because I, th- I think a lot of a lot of Formula Two fans or motorsport fans in general, to be fair, I, I don't think they maybe understand the uh, the difficulties. It's it's not easy being a Formula Two driver, right? And uh, I know you you know halfway through the season, you've you've also been in Formula Three, but that that presumably comes with a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. No matter if you're at the front of the grid, the back of the grid, in the middle of the grid, no matter what category you're in. So how how do you go about kind of looking after yourself throughout a season? Yeah, I think that, uh, like you said, in any sport, um, the critics always can create anxiety um, or create, yeah, just uh, create that stress of this is what people are thinking, this is what the situation that I'm in. Um, But uh, like I said, yeah, like in any sport, you know, soccer happens the same thing, American football, basketball, tennis, it happens in 
in every sport that whenever it goes bad, you're only ever as good as your last event, as your last result. And that's, you know, something that professional athletes have to bear with. And uh, I definitely think that we have yet to like transcend that barrier of understanding that you shouldn't take it as a burden. We should really just approach every single event with mind over matter and and that critics really does it really doesn't add up to anything at the end of the day in your mind and, and in your performance. So I this is what I try to um repeat myself constantly twenty four seven when I'm at the gym or when I'm in the swimming pool, when I'm in the simulator. And also another factor in, in critics, at least specifically in formula racing, is that, you know, not a lot of people drive, you know, like nobody has ever the chance specifically also because of the uh, financial limitation, which that I understand it very much. And people obviously understand that very much, but that does create though, you know, uh, uh, let's say a curtain that people, few people can really profoundly have a concise and, and valid legitimate opinion on, on what drivers are doing. And, and most of the people that are, you know, doing, putting their, their critics, they really can't, they really don't know. And um, I could give you an example. Um, Kush Maini, when he moved into Formula 2, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I saw his post in, in, the, in the comments that most of the people were, were, were saying that, he, you know, he was a disaster. He was a fraud in Spa because of his move that he wiped out like four or five drivers. And that is all just money that's behind him. But then he comes in with a team that had scored, I think, uh, you know, fifth or sixth in the championship and and he's he was p5 in the after like four rounds in the in the in the championship so that just shows that you know people can only you know the majority of the critics and at least in formula two and formula three and formula one they can only get to a certain extent of their of their you know knowledge when they when they're when they're going to criticize um the drivers because they just really don't really know the story behind all these people and and uh, it's really it's just harder to see in, in in this in this motor racing at this level that we're at. A hundred percent agree with you there, and yeah, I appreciate you being so honest with us there as well. That's that's great, and what a season Kushmani's having, by the way, as well. Right, he's having a great yeah. season. Yes. Good stuff. Is is this the best Brad Brad Benavidez that we we've ever seen? Is 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 this the best you've ever been in a race car? Definitely. I mean, <laughs> damn, I'm I've. Uh, I was a karting driver um, only when I was 16, um, and uh, every year that's that's passed by in my driving in my racing career, I've I've really you know exponentially improved by you know relative to at least the people that I'm that I'm racing with so much. You know, it's um, it's not the same to <laughs> to go from karting in 2021. And, and Formula 2 in 2023. So. Yeah, what a journey that's been as well. That's, uh, yeah, some going. Um, Sasha asks, who is your, who's been your toughest teammate in your career and who's your closest friend in motorsport? I'd say that my toughest teammate has been Zach O'Sullivan last year in Carlin. Um, to be fair, though, in the last three rounds, I really caught up to him. And uh, if it if it if it were for Spa, um, I'm pretty sure that we we were really similar on pace and we were quite competitive on a similar you know level both of us. And then also going into Zambor and Monza, Zambor I just missed out of the reverse pole um, because I was P14, and in my lap I actually had like a huge traffic in in like one of the corners where I lost like three tenths. And compared to him, I was I lost like that like two tenths meaning that <laughs> the rest of the lap i was i was you know really similar to him and if things would have gone differently i wouldn't have had that traffic you know i could have had shown that i would have been reverse pull and pace quality would have been quite similar but unfortunately it didn't go that way i was just just beneath that threshold and um but you know you know let's say objectively Speaking, the pace was was there as well, Zambor. And then also in Monza, even though we both had complete bad luck because of the, let's say, the gambling issues that there is in, in Monza with the qualifying. You saw qualifying last year in F3. You know how people enter the pit lane. Nobody wants to be 
breaking the the draft. So um, so yeah, we weren't lucky there. But then when it came to the race um, race pace, we were we were really both looking very similar. Um, I actually was um, I overtake I overtook him once, and then he was just like we were really on a par. So um, yeah. Uh, I'd say he's been the my toughest competitor, but um, you know, out of out of adversity and out of difficulty, I only find eventually, you know, strength. So I really appreciate that from from him. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And 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 the second part and, of that question, closest friend. Yeah, my closest friend. I, I would have really to be friends with people in motorsport when you're racing against them, right? Yeah, I mean. I've seen people, you know, in F3 that have close friends and they also have close group, um, uh, like group friends, a friend group, sorry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't really, I, I have, let's say, um, um, how do you call it? In Spanish, you say conocidos, which is like, um, yeah, guys that you sometimes, just pals, you know. Acquaintances, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, acquaintances. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could consider a couple of them. I could say, for example, in F3, um, Mari Boya, which is my, uh, he's in, in my um, in my management team, that I get along very well with him, and I could I consider him my friend. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm not I'm not going out and having coffees with him or or going to the movies because I'm just so isolated in my in my in my day to day racing schedule, you know. What you went yeah. off when I'm off race week? Yeah, for sure. That's really interesting. Uh, another food related question. So Aaron asked, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Uh, we've actually asked this to a few drivers recently. Zay Maloney says yes, pineapple does belong on pizza. Uh, Enzo Fittipaldi said no. I can't, James Correa, we asked that question too as well. Do you like pineapple on pizza or not? Oh mate, that's like I'm really sorry, but that's like the most shit I've. I didn't really read over the question, but so I, it's so generic. Like I've seen that in F one, I've seen that in soccer. <laughs> it's a question that so many people tend to tend to like to ask, and it's like, yeah, I I, I kind of like it, and then I'm gonna get you know, I'm gonna get criticism because on one side and then on the other side, people are gonna say that they're on me with it. But I just it's a, it's a funny question. <laughs> yeah. A, you're going to get grilled in the comments now for saying yes. Uh, B, Aaron, come up with a more original question. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, last couple of questions then, Brad. Um, let's talk about, yeah, the, the rest of the season then. So uh, is there one track that you're you're most looking forward to between now and the end of the season? Uh, yeah, I'd say Spa. I'm really yeah. looking forward to that. I, somehow I've always felt like some type of energy there, man. It's the place that I've had the best results and... Apart from that, I enjoy it like so much. So yeah, I'd say spa. Um, and final question from me: uh, What are you hoping to uh, to achieve between now and Abu Dhabi to to make this season a success in your eyes? I think it's like I told you. Really, it's just exponential. I mean, it's not like you know people are gonna ever just you know go from you know from being like that to 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 being a lot better. It's just uh, it's a it's a process. And for example, if you look back uh, at Zane Maloney um, last year, yes, objectively speaking, superficially speaking, you could say out of nowhere, he's like, wow, it's he's he became the protagonist. But uh, that was just that was in the cooking. You know what I mean? That was just in the process. And and even though it might seem like that internally, really, it's just it's just all part of the process. So. I, that's what I'm looking forward to. That's what I'm focused on. Brad, listen, it's been great to talk to you. We're really looking forward to seeing Brad 2.0 uh, till the end of the season. But from all of us here at Inside F2, wishing you all the very best of luck for the rest of the season. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for for listening. Those of you that uh, listened through the whole video. Cheers. Cheers.